person who the house belongs to. The host is the person throwing the party. And I want you to know that we, uh, as human beings, are doing a lot of hosting. <laughs> but this morning, I want you to know who your guest is. Yes. Who have you welcomed to the party? Oh, have mercy. Help me, Holy Spirit. Hmm. And uh, let's go to the word of the Lord. Uh, go with me to Deuteronomy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 2. We're going to start there. Deuteronomy 2. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 2. If I was you, I'd pull out my pen and paper. Deuteronomy chapter 2, starting at verse 3. And the word of the Lord says, And the Lord spoke, spake unto me, saying, This is the Lord talking to Moses. You have come past this mountain long enough. It's time for you to turn northward. What God's saying, you've been dealing with some things in your life long enough. You've been going around and around in a circle, yet going nowhere. You've been, you, you've been just circling the same place. You've been wondering, why am I stuck in this situation? Why, why is it I see this same trial coming my way? Why am I dealing with the same thing over and over again? Because you've been circling around the same mountain. And if you circle around that same hilltop, you're not doing it. You're not making any progress. And the Lord say, I want you to minister the ministry of Jesus Christ, healing and deliverance. And God told Moses, y'all been around. They went when they came out of Egypt. He said, I want you to go to Mount Seir, which is the same as Mount Horeb. And I want you to meet me there. Bring all the children of Israel at that mountain. But you can obey God in, in one step. In step two, you don't move. You come to Christ. You accept him as your Lord and Savior. But let us go on to some deliverance. Let us go on to some freedom. Let us go on to some liberty. Let us go on to where we see victory in our lives. Oh. And the Lord said to Moses, said, now that you have been around this mountain long enough, take these people from this mountain and go on further. Let me tell you something, to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior is the best thing you could ever do. Amen. It's the best thing I've ever done. Yes. But I have to grow from there. I got to grow. Now, I'm walking in the authority of the believer. Well, anything just don't happen in my life, and I tolerate it. So there are things that will come your way to attach itself to you, and you have to decide, you know what, that's long enough. I, I've been dealing with this long enough. Enough is enough. Now let's go on from here. Amen. Let's go forward. I, I, hear, I hear the command of the, of the master sergeant, move, my daughter, move. Go forward. Don't go backward because Egypt don't have nothing to offer. Go forward, daughter. But you got to leave where you are. Ooh. Look, 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 look. Go look at Deuteronomy 1 and verse 2. There are 11 days journey from Horeb, the mountain, Horeb, that God told him, you know, circled it long enough, by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. Kadesh Barnea was on the east side of, uh, of going into Canaan, going into, um, to take the land. He said, there are 11 day journey. It's an 11 day journey from around this mountain to where I'm trying to get you. It's a short distance. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. Yeah, you're going to have to go through some things, but it's an 11 day journey. Let's see what Click says. And it came to pass in the 40th year. What? What did you say? It should have taken me. 11 days, and what should have took 11 days end up taking 40 years. In the 11th month, on the first day of the month that Moses spoke unto the children of Israel according to all that the Lord had commanded him, had given him in commandment unto them. It took them 40 years to take an, what could have been an 11-day journey. 
Some of us struggling with the same thing ever since we've been saved. You've been saved 40 years. You got to grow. You got to be willing to mature. You got to be willing to get in this word and deny yourself and learn the way of the Lord. Now, 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 let's go to, um, let's go to Isaiah 8 and 19. Uh, I'm still talking about hosting unwanted spirits. I got that. I want you to see it in the word. I can preach it, but eh, it's in here. Isaiah 8 and verse 19. In Isaiah 8 and 19, the word of God says, and when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits. And unto wizards that peak and that mutter, should not a people seek their God for the living to the dead? Say what? Now Isaiah begins to talk about a word called familiar spirits. There are familiar spirits among us, saints of God. What is a familiar spirit? A familiar spirit, the Latin word is familiarius. Belonging to one's family mm, and ready to serve as a servant. Wait a minute. Ready to serve as a servant? They are demons on assignment from Satan to hinder you to attack you, to possess. You can't possess a child of God that's born again, but he can oppress human beings. Cause you to have suicidal thoughts. Familiar. Now, now let, let's break that on down. They, they practice necromancy. What does that mean? In the ancient world, one of the activities of a familiar spirit was to have conversations with the dead. God said, you've been marching around that mountain long enough. Long enough. Now, now listen, listen. This is spirits that originated from the realm of darkness. These are, and the, of course, theologians have said that when the angels fell, when Lucifer fell, one third of the angels fell with him. One third of the angels that had seen the presence of God that knew the glory of God, that had experienced the power of God, yet they fell with a self-indulged creature that got caught up in himself and all was about I, Lucifer. The Bible says he convinced one-third of God's angels to fall with him. And where did they? They fell in a realm called Ruling darkness. Ephesians 6 and 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against, quote, rulers of the darkness of this world. They can't rule in heaven. Lucifer was kicked out of heaven. Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And then our revelation says, woe be unto you, inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come down unto you. In other words, the prince of the power of darkness is in this world right now. And people walk around like he don't exist. Now, now. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Now, let's, that we have identified the origin. We have defined. So what is going on then? These familiar spirits are now operating inconspicuously within the fabric of people's mindsets. In the fabric of people's thoughts and their emotions. To the degree that they are undetected by the host. The host can't even recognize somebody else in their house. The host can't even recognize somebody else talking through my mind. I thought it was me. But I wondered where that thought came from. I, 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 there's a thought that when the word comes forth, there's a thought that comes that said, that ain't right. There's a thought that'll come that'll fight the truth of God's word. It's a thought, amen, and you thinking it's you. You think you're so smart that you don't have to believe these 66 volumes of the book. 
But what you don't recognize is that every thought you have is not your own. You are hosting a guest that ought to be unwanted. You weren't invited to my party. And what the devil does, what these familiar spirits do, they camouflage themselves in the fabric of your personality and how you conduct yourself to make you think it's you and not them. They want to, and, and their disguise is to be unnoticed and undetected. Because if I know you a devil, you got to go. Because if I know I didn't invite you in, you got to go. Unwanted and undetected. Disguised. Oh, help me hold it up. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But they have an assignment from the devil. See, just like God give his angels assignments to go and watch over you, you got an angel assigned to you. Now, I wonder how, when the last time you talked to your angel instead of talking to that dead person. If they dead, they dead. If they visit to you at the foot of your bed, that is called a familiar spirit. God is not sending a dead person back to you to send you no message. Oh, hear me now. Because the Bible says in the book of St. Luke, praise God, that when, when, uh, when, when, when the, uh, the poor beggar died and the rich man Lazarus died, Lazarus went to hell and opened his eyes up in hell, and when he realized he was in hell, he said, Father, and then the beggar died. The Bible says that he said, Father, Abraham, let Lazarus come between this gulf and bring me some water to cool my tongue. It's hot in hell. And then he said, no. He said, Lazarus can't come from over here to where you are. Then he said, well, let Lazarus go back and tell my brothers that I left on the earth. Oh, help me, Lord. You dead, but you still, your soul and your spirit is still alive. When you die, it's not all over. It's the beginning of eternity for you in another realm. He said, well, have him go back and uh, tell my brothers to get right with, you, with God and, and so that they don't come to this place where I am, this place of torment, this place of darkness. Abraham said they got the preacher. I am not sending somebody from the dead to give a message to somebody on earth that's alive. A familiar spirit will look like your dead daddy, your dead fiance, your dead child. It'll look like somebody, your dead mama, your dead brother. That demon don't care as long as he can trap your thoughts. And then when that spirit comes in, he guess what he does? He come in and take over your mindset. That's all you talk about. That's all you think about. That's, all, that's your way. You wake up in the morning talking about it. You go to bed talking about it. Everybody you meet, you talking about it. Every now, let me tell you something. You can do a sickness the same way. Well, let me tell you about my diabetes. Let me tell you about my heart attack. Let me tell you about my this and my that. Let me tell you what I'm dealing with. Let me tell you about my depression. It's not mine. But, but when you take ownership of it, oh, look, 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 listen to this. You are operating under spiritual law, and you wonder why you're going around the same mountain. You can dance around that mountain. Oh, you can praise God around that mountain. You got days of victory and all that, but let me tell you. What you, don't, what you fail to realize that the kingdom of God operates by spiritual laws. You better write this down in the spirit of your heart. And one of them is called the law of invitation and agreement. If you agree with darkness, God says so be it. If you agree with a suggestive lie from a familiar spirit, God will let you continue because it's called the law of invitation. I want you here. And you don't even know how you operate. What you're doing is you're saying, God, I'll take this, this familiar spirit, but I don't want your word. Ooh, ooh. It's called the law of agreement as well. Let me tell you something, body of Christ, saints of the most high God. Stop saying amen to everything. 
Stop agreeing with everything. You better look and dissect and overlook and look again and realize you need to hold your peace. They are active. It's the law of invitation. In other words, the law of invitation means you invited that spirit then. You hosting that spirit. And you think it's going somewhere? That's why you're going around the same mountain. Because God, word, word. Because let me tell you what the devil starts saying. You've been doing, you've been dealing with this same thing for the last 40 years. And if God was who he said he was, you should be delivered by now. So see, the devil is the accuser of the brethren. So what he does, he's coming back to a child of God and accusing the father that the father has done something unjust because you're dealing with a situation you don't see deliverance in. But the problem is you have invited that thing in. And if you didn't invite it in, get listen, we invite Jesus to come into our heart and to live here. And because we invite him in, when we invite him in, he come. If you mean it from your heart and you believe it, if you uh, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, then Jesus comes in. But if you believe that you are, are, uh, are what has been suggested to you, everything your family has dealt with, it go from generation to generation to generation. Praise God. And you confess, well, everybody else in my family went around this mountain. Everybody else done dealt with this addiction. Everybody else done dealt with alcoholism. Everybody else had a lying spirit. Everybody else robbed the bank. Everybody else, hey. Everybody else had babies out of wedlock. Why well, can't I? And what the devil said, oh, hallelujah, thank you. They so ignorant, they don't even know they are abiding in darkness. The word of God says in Proverbs, your mouth will cause your flesh to sin. Sometimes we harp too much on these sins that other folk know about, but what about that stuff ain't nobody see but you and God? That's right. To invite them in. This is the law of invitation. If you invite a spirit in, not only do you invite them, you welcome. I don't want you to go nowhere. I'm going to have my bed ready tonight, this afternoon, midday. I don't want, I don't want that other sister so-and-so to be home because she knows that she always watching my front door and my back door. So I have my bed ready. I sneak you in on my side door. But you you preparing for that spirit. You preparing for lust to overtake you. You preparing uh, 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 for that spirit to operate in your life. And you think it's going somewhere? Oh, no. You operate on a spiritual principle and God will not deliver you because you don't want to be delivered. Ain't no need of anointing person laying hands on you because we lay hands on you. You don't want, to, you don't want that to happen. Because if I lay hands on you and that spirit leave, when it come back, it's going to bring seven worse than that. Oh, let's walk in this word. Stop playing with God. Stop playing with the spirit of darkness. Stop living in the realm of darkness. And if you don't make them comfortable, and they ought to be unwanted because you a born-again, blood washed Christian. Ooh, that's what you said. The other thing is, you can have an atmosphere where they're welcome. See, that's why this atmosphere in here had to be saturated. This atmosphere in here this morning had to be purified. Because I am not going to be stepping up in a house, amen, where the devil thinks he got control. I said, the devil is a liar. Oh, no, 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 you don't have your, you better get your hand off of this atmosphere. You better get your hand off of the flow of what the Holy Ghost want to do in the service. But if we welcome that spirit, it'll stay. Oh, he ain't did nothing about it. That devil saying, I'm going to sit on, I'm going to press this one, I'm going to have a mind somewhere else. Then I'm, I'm, the musicians ain't going to be able to float in the, I just take control. I'm gonna do what I want to do. The devil is a lie. No, no, no. Not when Jesus defeated him over two thousand years ago. Why should we tolerate foolishness? Why should we tolerate a controlling spirit? Because he really want to control everything. He don't want to just get behind the wheel of your life. He want to drive your car. He want to be the main host in your life. He want to be the main guest. I said, you come my way, you're unwanted. How many times have you had to deal with unwanted guests in your house when it was ants, roaches? Oh, help me. Oh, let's go there. Ants, roaches, 
rats in holes, but bed bugs, roaches in the cracks, ants hiding in corners, and squirrels in the attic. You don't, you don't see them, but you can hear them, Joe. Get, get, get. What, what, what? What? That's an unwanted guest. He got in there some kind of way, and if you don't do something different, they're going to stay. As in the natural, so in the spiritual. Stop hosting and making the enemy comfortable in your life and in your children's lives. Mm, so you got to look at the atmosphere. <laughs> Are they welcome and comfortable? I said you're not welcome. Go. God told Moses, now it's time to leave this mountain. Go northward. I said I'm going, Father. And I ain't taking no demons with me. No, 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 no. No, it's time for this is the day of deliverance. Jesus has already come. Hallelujah. That's one of the spiritual laws, the laws of invitation. Ooh, ooh. Oh, I got someone. Uh, now let's look at their activity. Go with me to Luke chapter 9, verse 37. Luke 9 and 37. Luke 9 and verse 37. Ooh, ooh, thank you, Lord. It's still yet young in the morning. Luke 9 and 37. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Luke 9 and 37. Luke 42. The word says, and it came to pass that on the next day when they were come down from the hill, much people met him. And behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, I beg you. Jesus, I beg you. Look what he said. Look upon my son, for he is my only child. This is my boy. I call him Junior. He my only son. My only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly cry out, and it tear him, that he foam again, and bruising him, hardly departs from him. He said, now look, this activity that's been going on. I've been dealing with this for a while now, Jesus. I'm sure glad you're here on the city. I'm glad you're in the city. Because I've been dealing with this long enough. What is he did? He tear him. He tears him. He seizes my son and causes him to go in convulsions. Look at that activity. And he suddenly cries out. I can imagine this child sleep at night and all of a sudden, ah! And somebody think, oh, he's just having a nightmare. No, baby, it's deeper than that. Your child being attacked. Amen. And the devil, oh, it's medical. Now, listen, I'm a, I'm a licensed pastoral counselor. I have counseled people. And I believe in, in, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. But let me tell you something, saints of God. You don't manage demon spirits, you cast them out. You cast them out, the person. Listen. And the Bible, and the daddy said not only that, but he tears him and calls him to foam at the mouth. Sound like a convulsion. So he, so this spirit foams at the mouth and, uh, and then, and bruise him, cause him to have bruises all over himself. In other words, he must be uh, uh, out of control and bruises him hardly and rarely, hardly, even with great difficulty, that spirit depart. It'll finally leave him alone. But guess what? It come back. And guess what? It choose another time and come back. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. In other words, it, it, listen, listen. Every door you've opened in your life for the enemy to come in, close it. If not, you're gonna be you're gonna be you're gonna be having a party with an unwanted guest. The word says, and I besought your disciples. That daddy said, I went to your disciples. I went to the people who following you. I went to them Christians to cast this devil out, my child, and they could not. And Jesus answered and said, oh, faithless and perverse generation. Oh, faithless and perverse. 
Employ, you're unbelieving and perverted in the way you're thinking. See, that's what the devil will do. That ain't no demon. That ain't no familiar spirit. That's just his personality. That's just something she dealing with. You better find out what kind of door been open to invite that spirit in. And how long will I, shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring that child to me. Bring your son to me. And he was yet a coming and the devil, is that what it said? The demon is really saying the demon. The demon threw him, picked him up and threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered. Jesus healed and delivered. That's his ministry. The child again delivered him to his father. And everybody was wondering. And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. But while they wondered everyone uh, at all these things, which Jesus said, and then Jesus started to talk to his disciples. There come a time. Listen. Listen, saints of God. I am aware if you have ever had to deal with or instruct somebody in deliverance, I am aware of a young child who had given themselves over to, um, to go with me to Deuteronomy while I'm sharing this with you. Go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18. Go there with me. So we see the activity. And what was this, the, 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 the function? So you got to look at the behavior of these spirits. That's their activity and the function. So you got a loud voice. You got crying. You got all this going on. What the enemy was doing, he was tormenting this child. Jesus did not bring little children in the world to be tormented. And your child acting out behaviors that's not becoming. They are, in, they are entertaining and unwanted guests. And you got the authority to do something about it. Oh, go with me to Deuteronomy chapter, what did I say? Deuteronomy 18. I'm reading out the New Living Translation. Because, see, I want you to be free because it's going to be some sanctification up in here. Deuteronomy 18, starting at verse 9. Are you with me? And the word of God says, when you enter the land, the Lord said, now look, I told you to leave the mountain. But when you get over there to the promised land where I promise you to go, to the land the Lord your God has given you, be very careful not to imitate the detestable customs of the nations living there. You've been around folk who are doing some of this stuff. And you have learned from them. God says, be careful not to imitate their detestable customs. For example, never sacrifice your son or daughter as a burnt offering. You don't set nobody on fire talking about the Lord told me to say, that's a demon talking to you. That's a familiar spirit talking to you. What's the objective? To kill. The devil comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And not only will you set a child on fire, you are killing a child, and then you going to jail. But see, the enemy will try to drag you to the point where you believe everything you think you act on it and you have not yet learned to hear the voice of the Father because I heard Jesus said in St. John chapter 10, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. There are many voices in the world and you have to distinguish by the word of God which one from God and which one from darkness. Mm -hmm. Or you will be hosting an unwanted guest. Listen, Father, walk with me. And let not, and do not let your people practice fortune telling. They got fortune tellers in the land. Or use sorcery. Or interpret omens. Or engage in witchcraft. Or cast spells. Or function as mediums or psychics. Or call forth the spirits of the dead. And let me go ahead and add horoscope. Oh, see, oh, oh, but that's my, that's my sign under which I was born. Let me tell you, when I was born in darkness, that's how I operated. Amen. When I was born in darkness, when, before Bishop and I got saved, we had all of these big old cups that we bought, praise God, with his, his sign on it and one with my sign on it from a different month. And then, then, and we had all that stuff up in our house. And his mama had a big old, a big, a big circular, um, 
a piece of artwork on her wall and all around it was all the horoscopes and all the signs and all of that. Let me tell you something. You wonder why you're struggling with some mess because you, you got articles in your house that belong to the devil. And he used that to say, I'm welcome, so why should I leave? You can cast me out. You can say all you want to say. You can say the blood. You can say the name of Jesus. But you don't understand. You got something that welcomes me in your home. So that's why I ain't going nowhere. Oh, listen, listen. Well, why are you here? I'm here because uh, you got something belonging to me. Get rid of that and I, I'll go. If you cast me out in the name of Jesus, it's called a house cleaning. If I got a guest there I don't want, get out! I said, go, go now! Well, let, let, let me get me back. No, I'm going to throw your bags. Bam! You get out and hear your stuff, take it with you. I don't want you to know your stuff. You're going to torment my life, my God. No, 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 I'm going to have peace. If the Prince of Peace live in me, I'm going to have some peace up in here. The Bible says, it says even uh, cast spells. Let me tell you, I am aware of a child that had been, had been spending hours in front of the, the screen watching Disney movies. Let me tell you something, parents and grandparents. You can open your child up to a demon spirit, letting the TV be the babysitter. Or the, or, or the social media pad, the iPad, that's the babysitter. You don't know what the child looking at. And this child began that she saw they was teaching the children how to cast spells. I'm talking elementary. I'm not talking middle school. This child starts saying, I, ca I cast this spell on you. And the mother heard it. It shook her to the core. And, and then the child's. Listen to this. Then the child started to have worms in her body. And the parent was wondering, why am I child dealing with this kind of stuff? Oh, y'all better hear me now. I, and, and, and they called me. I said, let me tell you, it's a result of the mere fact that you got to shut down every door that has been opened to that child's mind. Ignorance is not an excuse. The devil don't care. He'll throw himself a party, invite 50 demons to your ignorance. I said, shut it down. Amen. Repent. And tell God you saw to have the child to repent. Amen. Take that, 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 that system from that child. Amen. And don't give it back. Let their mind be free. Hello. And then in the name of Jesus, take authority over them worms. Take authority over every activity. The devil think he has a right. And he really had a legal right by invitation and atmosphere. I got it. I got it. I'm going to go do it now. I went back, did exactly what they, I said, you better, and then you, then, see, the word of God says, submit yourself to God first, then resist the devil. A lot of y'all, a devil, I said, go. He ain't going nowhere. You ain't obeyed nothing God told you to do. You just going around a mountain, looking pretty, sharp to the core. Uh, shaved off some fat, but you're still dealing with the same demon. That mother called me back and said, Mama, it's done. No more worms pass from that child's body. Amen. See, if you entertain it, if you, if you, you can be walking free, but your child getting bound up. If your child getting bound up, do you have enough of spiritual discernment to know you're so busy trying to make it a male-female thing? Let me tell you, that devil got your mind wrapped up in, in personalities of who the better part of the female or the male. I don't give a flip about no male-female because in the kingdom of God, there is neither male nor female. Your mind so wrapped up on male chauvinism and a woman having authority or a woman doing something, amen, that you don't realize that your thoughts are being controlled by a demon spirit. You fighting a natural battle. Deal with some real demons. Deal with some real thoughts trying to invade your mind and make it and, and be trying to become a part of your personality. If you protect that devil, he ain't going nowhere. That's 
the way I am. You saying you welcome. Yeah. I've been like this ever since I've been in the world. You saying you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> ain't nobody going to change my mind. Oh, you think you above the word? That devil having a field day. And then everybody you talk to, you spew out that poison. Oh, help me, Lord. But let me see you, amen, walk in some liberty in your own life. And once you walk in liberty in your own life, you can help somebody else get delivered in their life. You can't help nobody else get delivered so you can recognize the demons that are unwanted in your life. Strangers at the party. Spirits of darkness living in your life. Oh, let's go on. You got to deal with them horoscopes. Let me tell you what, and I'm going to tell you what Bishop and I did in a minute, just a minute. Uh, and look at what it said. And they called forth the spirits of the dead. There is a, why people trying to go back and talk to ancestors? I don't need no ancestor to tell me nothing. I don't need to talk to no Mother Earth. It ain't no Mother Earth. It's Father God. No, 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 no. I believe God. I, I don't take the suggestions of people around me when their suggestions kind of fit the word of God. Amen. I cast it down. I don't care if the scientist said it. I don't care if the physics teacher said it. It doesn't matter if it contradicts this word. I, it is not mine. It's not my portion. It's not going to be attached to me. I will not repeat the words because what the devil will do, he'll suggest evil. He'll suggest a concept. He'll suggest that you take it and you believe it too. The devil is a lie. Oh, no, I'm steadfast. I'm going to be steadfast. Ooh, ooh. This word will do it. But you must be blameless. If the word say I can be blameless, I don't believe nothing nobody else got to say about it. You must be blameless. Before the Lord your God. If I'm not blameless, since I'm so busy helping protect these demon spirits attacking me, amen, and when they come, they're going to be like the seven sons of Sceva. You say you must be blameless. Somebody said blameless. blameless. Before the Lord your God. That which you know to be wrong, stop it. Stop hosting unwanted guests. Stop hosting concepts that are not biblical. Stop believing anything. I can love you, but I can disagree with you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. I love you, but I sure enough disagree. Amen. Amen. Then the last verse, part of that says, the nations you are about to displace, consult. the Lord said, I'm telling you, they consult sorcerers, witches, and witchcraft, and fortune tellers. But the Lord your God forbid you to do these things. And another text says, because when you do these things, you defile yourself. And you're wondering why you're going around dealing over and over with the same thing. You wonder why. And, and when I look back in my family and I see on my, on, my, on my mother's side all the alcoholism, uncles dying in DT fits in the hospital. The, 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 I mean, the drink alcohol to the, to the fact that you having fits, but you still drinking. And then my, mom, my mother and father would drink. I told them one day, I said, don't, don't, don't have when my children are over here. If you can't restrain yourself enough to not have one of my little, little toddlers going to the refrigerator to get you a beer, if I find out about it, they won't be back. See, y'all, y'all, we, 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 we couldn't have walked with Jesus. Oh, no, we couldn't. Uh, I said, listen, you are not going to train my child. It's all right to get, put a beer in their hand. Because I know what demonic spirits have fought the family line. My parents at that time did not know Jesus. They couldn't discern their left hand from their right. And guess what? They didn't do it no more. Because I told my children, if your grandmama and granddaddy asked you to do so-and-so, let me know. Oh, they'll tell it because they know their mama didn't want to hear no lie. Don't, I taught my children, don't you lie to me. I'd rather for you don't say nothing before you lie to me. Don't say nothing. Just shut your lips. Just, mm. And then after they got bigger, they said, well, Mama, I'd just rather not say. I already knew. See, train them while they're young. Go ahead. 
Go with me to Acts chapter 16. Boy, we just let the Holy Spirit just lead us through this word. Acts chapter 16. Amen. Hosting unwanted guests. Get them out. Get them ants out your house. Get them frogs out your house. You know, witches use stuff like that. Oh, yes, they do. And then on my daddy's side, they had an issue with adultery. All they did want to do was fornicate and lay around with somebody else's wife. Or they married and want, something, want a single woman. Well, look, you should have stayed single. So what, 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 what does that mean? That means I guard my heart against that kind of stuff. Why? So that what, what these spirits that attack the family won't live in my life. Stop making excuses on why your family got caught up in all these addictions. And, you know, my mama, was a, my mama was a drug addict. My daddy was a drug addict. You know, my mother was a drug addict. And, you know, it's almost like ain't no help for me. That's what the devil. See, that thought come from the enemy. You've been saying it so long, you believe ain't no help for you. You saying it so long, you, you, you disabling and dishonoring the power of God to, to come in and to deliver you out of that situation. Go with me to Acts. What I told y'all, we're going to Acts 16, didn't I? Oh, this good. Look at Brother Paul. My God, my brother didn't play. I love it. Amen. That's why I don't play. Amen. I, I can laugh and talk to you, but I'll still come back and tell you what Jesus said. Amen. I pull your skirt, tail, your coat by the side, and give you the living word of God and love you still. Amen. Love you still. <laughs> Acts chapter 16. Because these demons want to take over people's lives. Amen. They, they don't want to just come make no visit. Now they'll come and stay, praise God, and, and you know, they'll tap dance all over you if you let them. Acts chapter 16. Uh, uh, do I want to be? No, I want to be at Acts, uh, Acts 19. Uh, no, I'm going to go ahead with 16 first. Then we'll jump over to 19, all right? Acts chapter 16. Ooh, look at this. Starting at verse 11. Therefore, loosing, verse 11. Therefore, loosing, Paul, this is, uh, this is uh, Luke talking. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we, me, Paul and I, and the team, came with a straight course to Sam Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis, that's the region, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of the part of Macedonia. It's like Macon being in the center of Georgia. And a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was uh, accustomarily being made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which uh, met there. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Tartara, which worshiped God, heard us. She heard the gospel and God, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and abide. There. I want to host you. Y'all come to my house. I, I want you to, to stay with me. I'll feed you, let you know, y'all rest. And she constrained us and they went. Listen, this the same city. Verse 16. This the same city. Demon spirits of darkness are territorial spirits. They have a certain identification in certain regions of the world verse 16 and it came to pass we just had a woman at a prayer meeting to get saved and her family and it came to pass as we went to prayer again another day a certain damsel young slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us which bought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Now, 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 let's deal with this. This is a this is a spirit of divination. So, uh, this spirit of uh, divination uh, that this young girl is operating by, uh, in the Greek, that word divination means um, python, and a python will grab its victim and slowly choke the life out of them. And, uh, and the, but this, the, the word of God lets us know that she was making money for some people in the city, praise God, and that since she was uh, making money for them, she evidently would bring that money back, sound like somebody that's trying to be a pimp, controlling people's lives. And the Bible says, that, now this was at the prayer meeting, and you come to church and think you got time to play on your phone. 
in the answer phone calls, in the house of God, the house of prayer, and you think an unwanted host won't come your way? Listen, this damn woman was possessed with a spirit of divination, and the Bible says, uh, and she bought her, bought her uh, the, the people that she was working for much gain. Now, 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 so let me, let me bring this out. This spirit of divination uh, that this young girl was operating by um, also had authority in that region. And the reason these, this spirit of divination had authority, authority in the region and area in Philippi, because the leadership. I'm going to put it in our vernacular. The mayor, the city council, and everybody in authority welcome that spirit. When a spirit is welcome in a region, it takes control of the economy. Ugh. It takes control of the minds of the people, and there seems to be a unity of we like what's going on in our city. And that's what was going on in Tartara. It was one of the main, uh, one of the main ports in that day and time. But it won't. See, demon spirits won't territory. What can I control? Listen, listen. The Bible says, the Bible says that after they that this woman was making much gain for her uh, by Sue saying that means fortune telling. A Python spirit will make a person feel like they got a false gift. They think it's operating by the power of God, but it's operating by the spirit of darkness. Listen, the same followed Paul. Wait a minute, you following the apostle? You following the man of God? All right, spiritual preachers. Don't let preacher, reverend, and apostle, and bishop, and doctor, and pastor, and evangelist and prophet mess you up and you got a title, but you don't have no power. You want a title. A title does not authorize you to be a leader. You got to go through the process. It took Moses 120 years to be the man of God that was one of the most meekest on the earth, and he still didn't make it in the promised land. He went through the process. Oh, it ain't no such thing as a process. Keep on living. The Bible says she followed Paul and us, Luke says. She was just following us. We all saw her every time we looked. There she was. And she was crying out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God will show unto us the way of salvation. Ooh, 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 ooh. So, so, these men, is that true? These men show unto us the way of salvation. And these are men to God, they powerful. Don't get caught up on everybody praising you. They powerful. They can do this. They can do that. Oh, God just use you. Well, fine. To God be the glory. Well, I, I, I've been delivered. I'm set free. I haven't been dealing with that. To God be the glory. You know what that does? That keep your spirit right. That keep you giving God the glory. You can talk giving God the glory, and yet you don't do it yourself. This man. These men, I remember when we went to Jamaica to the mountain and, and, and had a revival and this, this, these, these, these Jamaicans got deliverance, came in the house and they said, it is of a truth that you all have been with Jesus because of the deliverance that took place in the house. A blind woman, eyes were open. Uh, the same woman was delivered from witchcraft. She couldn't talk. She couldn't speak. And, and, and the next day she came to me and was sharing what God did for her. And look at her dead in the eye and said, to God, be the glory for all the things he's done in your life. Now, this girl said, look, these men are men of God. You know what she was saying? If Paul and the Bible say, let's deal with what Paul did. And as she and this did she many days. Look, you know what was going on? Paul and them was going around the mountain. 
we're dealing with the same thing. This same, this same thing. <laughs> Talk, these men are men of God. Y'all need to hear them. They're going around the mountain. They dealt with it for many days, the Bible says. And then Paul was grieved. Do you know what that means? Paul was greatly annoyed. That thing aggravated Paul. It, it vexed his spirit. Amen. It, 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 Paul wasn't at peace with this woman following him, talking about you a man of God. And then, you know what Paul discerned? This is a familiar spirit. This is an unclean demon. And what he want me to do is he want me to agree with the suggestion. And, 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 and listen, it's true, but it, where did it come from? It came from the kingdom of darkness. God wasn't talking through this woman. Oh, y'all better hear me this much today. People can say good things about you to set you up to get you to agree with mess. They all said good things about you. Oh, you being mightily used. Oh, this, this, this. Oh, that, that, that. But if you, if you put yourself in agreement, what you have done, you have agreed with the law of imitation and agreement, and whatever come with that spirit coming your way. The Bible said, Paul turned around and said, <laughs> this is the last day I'm dealing with you. You ain't grieving me no more. I ain't coming to the house of God to pray and to worship God and got to come in and be grieved. I'm not coming to the house of God to be heavy and leaving out heavy. The devil is a lie. I'm not coming to the house of God to hear you about you. The Bible says we preach Jesus Christ and not ourselves. I don't want to know nothing about you. Give me Jesus. Bible says at the end of this prayer I mean Paul turned around and said in the name of Jesus Christ come out of her and he came out the same hour I bet she didn't follow them no more he said that's the end of that circle and I ain't circling no more you familiar see you're not tormenting me I'm not gonna be grieved in prayer Now, I'll take you to my last scripture. We'll, we'll let it go. We could go further, but we're going. And, and the enemy's secrets is uh, darkness, secrecy. Don't tell nobody this. No, I'm going to. Uh, no, let me give you this scripture first. Because uh, this script, we, we got to understand, we got we to gotta do it before God. We got to do it with one with another. And that is in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. Ephesians 5 and 11. Ephesians 5 and 11. The Th Ephesians 5 and 11 says, and then I'm going to take you to 20, and then we through. You ought to be, in, be getting delivered while this word going forth. See, I don't wait to repent to when the altar called me. I just repent while the word coming out. Because the only thing going to pierce the darkness is the living word of God. And that's what this word came to do today. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Why are you hanging out with people? See, you, you know why you hang out with people who uh, do what you do? So y'all can talk about that demon spirit. So y'all can keep that spirit welcome. All of us got cancer, so let me go hang out with all the cancer victims. And all you talk about for five hours is cancer. Well, we want to make your child, we want to put your face on our cancer poster. But wait a minute, I am not getting in agreement with that. You better, uh, uh, I don't want my name associated nowhere with no Alzheimer's, with no cancer, with no diabetes, with no hypertension, with no oppression. I am not, my face belong to God. And if I behold his face and behold his glory, so be it. But I will not allow you to help me to be a poster child for darkness. Not when I've been set free. The word of God says we have a duty to have no fellowship with darkness. Ooh, ooh. But rather reprove them. You know what that word reprove means? Expose the devil. Expose it. When you hear people talking and they not got off track and saying anything or they talk too much. The Bible says if you don't guard your mouth, your tongue going to cause you to sin. We have a responsibility and a duty to expose darkness. 
I will not participate, nor ain't it so. No, it ain't so. I will not agree with darkness, but I'm going to expose it. And let me tell you, I know families that they, they, let me tell you what they do. They got secrets in the family of stuff that done went down, incest and all kind of mess, and all of them protect them secrets. The devil is a lie. I'm a blood, blood, I'm, I'm a blood washed, born again Christian. I don't care who in my family did what. I am not going to agree with you in your mess. You ain't going to have no conversation with me about it because I'm going to expose it. And then what you wonder why that spirit always fighting our family? Because y'all protect that dark secret. Y'all protect that mess. And, uh, and everybody's suffering and the devil bringing people into captivity and uh, people's lives just, just all tore up from the flow up uh, from mess, praise God. Because you've been protecting it. Acts chapter 19, go there, write this down. Acts 19, 13 through 20. I'm going to give you the end of it. Acts 19, 13 through 20. Acts 19, 13 through 20. Oh, boy, that brother Paul had to run into some stuff. You live long enough in Christ, you're going to run into some stuff. You're going to have your own testimony, your own experience. Don't tell me about what God can do and will do and won't do and half talking truth and half talking lies. Because a half truth, like this woman with this spirit and a half lie, will bring people into captivity. Listen, Acts chapter 19, the Bible says, that there was a group of people going around, the seven sons of Sceva, and they were trying to cast devils out. That started at verse, uh, it really starts at verse 13. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon themselves to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, you want, you want to cast out the devil, you done called it over. And said, them boys said, we adjure you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preached. You can't be casting out no devil in whom the name of Pastor Bell preached. They didn't even know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And the Bible says they was trying to practice casting out spirits. And the Bible says, and there were seven. And see, the devil knows who's real and who playing church. And there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew and a chief priest, which did this. And the evil spirit, and one but one answered. You know, there was a time Jesus said, well, what's your name? And he said, Legion. That means we are many. That Jesus knew that meant many. This one but one. And he, Jesus, and the spirit said, Jesus, I know. I knew Jesus because the, these demon spirits had been in heaven before they got cast out too. That's why they went in the church and said, Jesus, that's son of God, son of the living God, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said, hold your peace. Let me tell you something else. You don't have, when you're casting out a devil, you don't go showboating, uh, having no conversation with no demon spirit. Who in control? You are the spirit. I don't want to hear what no demon spirit got to say. That's why Jesus said, hold your peace. That means be muzzled. Shut your mouth. Ooh. Listen, listen, listen. Ooh, this is good. That ain't thank you about. And the man in whom the evil spirit leaped on came, they lit the spirit leaped on these people, these boys overcame them and prevailed against them so that they were they had to run out the house. Now you unwanted. Naked and, and wounded. And, and guess what? The word spread to all the Jews and the Greeks as also dwelling at Ephesus and fear fell on them all in the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Ooh. God got the glory even out of their shame. And this is where I want to get key verse 18 and 19. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also bought curious arts. It was over millions of dollars and brought their books together. They had books uh, together and burned them all about witchcraft, all about sorcery. They burned these books. They got rid of the horoscope symbols and got rid of everything that they had attached themselves to in the demonic realm, Ouija boards and all of this kind of tarot cards and all of this and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. You know what they had? They burned them. They had a bonfire in the city and then everybody's standing so mightily prevail grew the word of god and prevail you want to grow up in the word you want the word to grow up in you every ant every frog every roach in the coma 
every bed bug, every bug in your bed. If you don't treat it like an unwanted guest, it ain't going nowhere. Then you walk in your authority. Submit to God first, and then walk in your authority. What's the victory points? The victory points are we have to renounce. Second Corinthians 4 and 2 say renounce the hidden things of dishonesty and shame. Father, I renounce. I've been playing around with witchcraft. I renounce, Lord, I've been entertaining familiar spirits of horoscopes and want to know the direction of my life every day. Well, I, I, Jesus, what, what you going to do with the Holy Ghost? You gonna, you're not going to allow me to lead you and guide you? You don't have to turn the heart. You got to renounce these shameful things. Renounce family secrets. Then acts, like just here in Acts, repent of willful, repetitious sins. Going around the mountains means I done did this sin over and over and I keep asking for forgiveness. Child, you just playing with a familiar spirit. That's all. You ain't, you ain't going nowhere. You're playing with a spirit. You got to destroy the books, the literature, the spells, the emblems. Uh, don't give me no jury with no cross on it, with no man hanging on it. I don't want it. Don't identify yourself with ignorance. Somebody else can be ignorant, but you accept it and get in agreement. Resist the devil. The, ad, resist, the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 9, resist the adversary steadfast in the face. Faith. You know what an adversary is? An adversary is an opponent in a lawsuit. See, this stuff is legal. I need to teach on the laws, a law of jurisdiction. It's legal. The devil have a legal right to do what he's doing. Because of our decisions. But if you resist him after you submit to God, resist the devil and the word say he'll flee. Then you resume the peace of God rulership, Colossians 3, 15 through 17. See, God has a, he said, I'll restore your victory. But you got to get rid of the unwanted guests in your life. Everybody on Facebook, on Zoom, in this congregation. As the Spirit of the Lord has dealt with your heart, I pray you were releasing, turning over, and, and, and getting rid of, un, rid of unwanted guests. Getting rid of that which was not uh, uh, approved by God. Detestable things, things that defile. The Lord wants us holy before him. Clean in his sight. Repent. Repent don't mean saying a few words. Repent means go in a different direction. <laughs> Start doing different, handling yourself, making different decisions. It doesn't mean just keep going. Lord, I'm sorry. And then you, you get up, you, you finish with, Lord, I'm sorry. Before sorry, get out your mouth. You're doing the same thing. No. You're playing. This day is the day of deliverance. Saints of God, our lives must be pure before God. And let us not take every suggestion that we hear in our thoughts and every emotions. I know of an individual that can get so emotional, they start screaming ah! just to shut up people from talking. That's not the spirit of God. That's a familiar spirit. You done did it so long you think it's all right. You get angry, ah, bam, bam, bam. Oh, you know, took that as your own personal personality. You get angry and you don't like a situation and you start cursing like a sailor. But you have done it so that that spirit is so welcome that you refuse to repent and resist. That's who I am. I'm just going to be, you ain't going to change me. Well, if I, I ain't trying to change it. Let the Holy Ghost do it. Let God's word do it. The Lord says, get rid, you the host, a kingdom divided, of, a kingdom divided cannot stand. If you decide I don't want you here, that enemy can't stay. Put him out. Put him out. God bless your Facebook. God bless your Zoom. 
Thank you, Brother Mills. Cut that off. In this congregation, as the Lord has dealt with this word today, let me tell you, this word been brewing in my spirit alone.